Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick and uh, cheap review, cheap, quick and cheerful review of One of Us Is Next by Karen M. McManus. This is the sequel to One of Us Is Lying. I read this pretty much in a single day because I was uh, held back in, in a hospital, and uh, this was the only book I had with me. Well, I had my other book and I'd finished that, so I, I whizzed through this. I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Another year, another drama, a whole new set of rules. Bayview High has just about recovered from the death of Gossip King Simon Kelleher a year ago. Now there's a new copycat in town who isn't ready to forget him just yet. A school-wide game of truth or dare seems fun, right? But this game is lethal. Choosing the truth may reveal your darkest secrets. Accepting the dare could be dangerous, even fatal. The teenagers of Bayview must work together once again to find the culprit before it's too late. So, let's check out some tabs. So we have a character here, let's see, these are all, every section is like headed by who, who is uh, behind it, so we've got Maeve here. She says, I'm not anti-beach, I'm just not a proponent of sand, or too much sun, or undertow, or sea creatures. I don't really like the beach either, for the same reasons. So this is in Nox's point of view here, and I just thought this was fun. I scan the half-off clothing rack next to me with a feeling of existential dread. I hate department stores. They're too bright, too loud, and too crammed full of junk that nobody needs. Whenever I'm forced to spend time in one, I start thinking about how consumer culture is just one long, expensive, planet-killing distraction from the fact that we're all gonna die eventually. Then I suck down the last of my six dollar iced coffee because I'm nothing if not a willing participant in the charade. And uh, we learn from him, uh, he says, I suck at anything tool related. I once wound up in the emergency room after hammering my thumb to a pulp when hanging a picture. That kind of sounds as though he had to hit his thumb multiple times. You'd think after the first time he'd be like, fuck this. Oh, and the, the rooms in uh, this this place he's working, they're called like Winterfell. Uh, and there's King's Landing because the guy who works there is a big Game of Thrones fan, which I thought was cool. So onto a Phoebe point of view. And what confuses me is these texts are going out, but then they're getting like a big long list of responses to them. And I didn't think that's how texts work. Okay, Nox. And uh, so Kirsten says, what are you in the mood to eat? She holds up her hand before I can speak. Please don't say fast food. I'm ancient, remember? I need a glass of wine and some vegetables. Kirsten is 30, the oldest of my four sisters. Mate, I'm 34 this year. I'm ancient. You're just old. Okay, on to Maeve's point of view. So um, she's worried that she's got a resurgence of, I think it was leukemia she had. Someone says, what's up, Maeve? And she replies, my white blood cell count probably, which I think is quite funny. She doesn't actually reply it, she thinks it. So back to Knox's point of view. And Bethany says, the justice system works very differently when you're white, male, rich, and good looking, which is very true. All right, this is Phoebe's point of view. She, she says, it's bullshit that I'm getting shamed for having sex and Knox is getting shamed for not having it, which is very high schooly. that's what it's like. And to be honest, wider society, really. And uh, another bit from Knox's point of view. And here she uses laughing stock as one word, which I'm pretty sure isn't how you're supposed to use it. I think an editor should have picked up on that. More from Knox's point of view. And Maeve says, parents are the single worst threat to any type of cyber security, because in this case, they just use the child's name and birth year. And this final tab is from Phoebe's point of view. And uh, Emma, sa Emma says, all I could think about was this quote. I can't remember where I read it, but it goes something like, holding on to resentment is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. So yeah, One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. I did think the writing has improved on this in this book compared to where she was with the uh, first book in the series, but then that was her first ever book. Um, the plotting was pretty good, characterization was good. I didn't have a problem so much with uh, the writing. It's uh, in present tense rather than past tense. The hopping between points of view didn't bother me too much. The one thing that did annoy me is that when we find out who's behind it at the end, they've not been mentioned in the book prior to that point, so it's not really a whodunit because you can't predict who it's going to be because they're just not mentioned. They just they just appear out of nowhere, which is kind of very deus ex machina. But I'm a kind of reader who just goes along with the journey. I'm not too bothered about trying to figure out who did it and why and all of that stuff. Um, so it didn't bother me, but I can see that that would annoy other readers. But overall, One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It was eight. So there we have it, that's why I made up One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.